here if you're watching us on the video version down here in Carnegie PA talking to the guys behind replay FX and, uh, and and some awesome pinball tournaments uh, going on well, of course please check everything out at awesomecast.net subscribe to this show and the awesome cast itself on Stitcher Spreaker iHeartRadio and of course the video versions on Facebook and YouTube as well with me today like I said we got two guests here in this awesome um, the, me the, the I like the, when I come into a place like this and I felt this play this way with replay FX it's the happiest place in Pittsburgh because look at all this if you're a video game fan pinball fan it is like it, it feels like it's forever uh, but uh, uh, of course Fred Cochran joining us and Doug Polka who are involved in various ways around here tell us what you do here my name's Fred and uh, assistant festival director along with uh, Elizabeth Cromwell um, I do special events uh, set up fundraising um, move games Listen to Doug shout orders at me and tell me stuff to do. Um, we 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 really don't really have titles. We just kind of do everything. You're the guys that hang out around here. <laughs> a lot, yeah. quite a bit. Doug? What about you, Doug? I'm Doug Polka. Um, my unofficial official title is director of competition here. Um, I help run the Papa World Championships, which are hosted in this building, and the Replay FX uh, Festival, which ha hosts a pinball tournament called Pinberg, which is the largest tournament in the world, over $100,000 in prizes. So that's pretty much what I spend most of my time on. I was talking to Fred before, you know, this is the place where whenever we're talking about video game things that are going on, uh, everybody would, would talk to me about like, hey, I hear there's this pinball place down in Carnegie, PA, where they do like the World Championship or something. I'm like, I need to hear about this. I need to find out about this. And, and I'm so so glad that you guys let me uh, come in here and check the place out and, and sit down with me. So so tell me a little bit about like what is this? You know what what is this 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 facility in in general? Go ahead, Doug. You go first. So so this is the uh, Replay Foundation headquarters. Um, Papa and Replay FX are basically under the umbrella of a nonprofit called the Replay Foundation, and basically we promote. Uh, video game competitions and video game culture and we try and preserve some of it. Um, this is our, we call this our world headquarters, situated nicely in an industrial park in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Um, it's a, it's an old actually sausage packing plant that um, the oh, uh, turkey nuts. Some kind of meat Probably packing both. plant. <laughs> Turkey, sausage. Sure, why not? Everything. Uh, and now it's, it's pinball. Yeah, it's basically been converted into a giant uh, pinball and arcade warehouse. Um, a lot of times you'll, people in the pinball world will refer to it as the Disneyland of pinball because you come in. We have over 510 pinball machines, and I believe we're up over 300 arcades. About 280. 280, so almost 300 in arcades. Yeah. So um, we host the Papa World Championships of this facility, so it's open to the public once a year. Uh, that's usually in early April. Uh, Papa 20 will be coming up if you go to our website, papa.org. Um, the dates will be posted there soon with the details of that event. It's awesome to hear that you guys are a nonprofit, and the, there there could be a nonprofit around video games of all things, right? Uh, because I mean, it's things it's the thing that mom said I need to stop playing more of when I was <laughs> younger, right? But now, like this, really is a part of culture, and and we look at technology today. I mean, this this is a lot of the 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 background and how we got from you know A to B with what's in our pockets right now with uh, with smartphones and stuff, right? Uh, you know, how significant is it that that you know that that kind of preservation of this video game culture? You know, personally, I think it's invaluable. I think uh, when you talk about the tablets and phones and all the different devices we have to play the games, nothing will replicate walking up to one of these pinball machines behind me or any of the video games that we have in our warehouse and play them. There's nothing to replicate that. It was a huge part of my childhood. You know, I grew up in the 80s right when it first boomed. And for me, I would spend all my paper route money on video games. I'd walk three miles to go to the nearest arcade and blow all my money. Um, it was a huge part of my life, and again, it's great to reintroduce this to um, people these days that either have either uh, forgotten about them, or they even exist, um, are being reminded of them, or they're just witnessing for the first time. And the nice thing about our event is that we get to reintroduce it to the kids and families. And when it's a kid that played a game of you know Pac-Man on his tablet with a touch screen, and then is actually holding a joystick and playing the actual game that it was created, it, to me, it's it, it's so much different and, and such an important part of this culture. 
Um, it's great that they're replicated digitally, but um, playing them to me, you can't be replaced. And also, besides the, the past history, of which we have plenty of here, um, uh, you know, pinball machines are still being produced. Arcade machines are still being produced. Like, and obviously, console gaming is bigger than it's ever been. Um, in the history of entertainment, really. And it's just such a huge part of a lot of people's lives. It's nice to be able to not only preserve the past, but we're also working on preserving the future as well, so that in 20 or 30 years, when we're no longer here, somebody else will be in this position, and they'll be able to show them the games from, you know, the 2000s. That's awesome. That's awesome. It, it kind of like, hey, this is what I played when I was your age kind of stuff for the, for the kids, right? Um, I, I know for me, uh, you know, there's a lot of games between, you know, your replay effects event and, and other things I've been to, whether it be barcades or whatever. There is a lot of, oh, yeah, I remember that Ninja Turtles game. I remember that Xbox game. But there's a lot of um, stuff that maybe I only experienced because, like, I was playing with MAME emulators around 2000, right? And it's great, too. Like, we're, I walked in, you were playing Robotron, right. and you're talking about, like, how that was your zen thing. And I'm like, you know, I played a little bit of on, on, on an emulator and it's just it's not the same experience because you're doing it on a keyboard or whatever you have it's not what it was meant to be yeah the experience playing the two games even on an xbox you can play robotron on your xbox with the thumb controllers but it's a totally different game when you play it in front of a cabinet like i said you get the essence of the game it's not the same when you have the midway gaming collection or whatever right and i have them all and they're great right, for, right. for what the, what they are they're tremendous. It's the same as digital pinball, which is really big right now. They're replicating past games and games that are being created now. Right. It's you know it's preserving them digitally so people can enjoy them, but it's it's so immensely different. It's um, uh, is there's, there's there's nothing like getting four people on a gauntlet machine. Oh sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean that like versus like hey everybody gather around and grab a controller or do it over the internet or something like that. Like it's still nothing like just just being shoulder to shoulder because we're a little bigger than we were when we were kids <laughs> trying to play that game, right? We're a lot and, bigger uh, in my case. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah, that that kind of thing. No, when we do uh, special events like we did uh, a pinball night down at the Heinz History Center. We took down 50 games. Uh, most of them were pinballs, but we took some video games, and we were very conscious about picking the games that we wanted to have groups of four people playing them. So we took the Gauntlet. We took the NBA Jam. We took the Simpsons. Um, we took a lot of the games where you had to stand side by side and actually play somebody. And you could trash talk sitting right next to them as opposed to a headset or through FaceTime or whatever the case may be these days. Um, and again, it's just it's a different experience. Yeah, because I know definitely like, replay effects. I know you know I spotted the X Men machine. Big fan of that. It's on my phone again. You know, but but still, anytime you see the arcade, you gotta sit down. And, it, and that was one that was lined up for a while mm -hmm. when I was there for that day at replay effects. Yeah, we we consciously put those games in areas where people could enjoy them too, because there are so many times where maybe you'll have a game and it'll be in a cramped place, and you have to really kind of sardine yourself into being able to play it. We consciously put them on the end of the, of the rows so people could spread out and play them and not have to worry about that so they could be comfortable doing it. Um, again, those are the games that most people want to play because, you know. It's, like it's said, a unique experience that you can't right. replicate Correct. fully on a digital Right. emulator and it's a big um and it's a big discovery point too because i know we were walking through replay and there was some japanese game where you're a bride that's running and then throwing a pie at the spectators and that's and, hyper bishy bashy yeah bishy bashy yeah. yeah i got daughters uh addicted to that game i, sh I introduced her <laughs> in the two zombies to it and i said you're gonna be here for a couple hours have fun I walked back, and literally an hour, hour and a half, they were still there playing it. Oh yeah, it's an it's an insanely just bizarre game, but it is incredibly addictive. It seems it seems like it's uh, for for anybody that's familiar with for a comparison point, it seems like kind of a WarioWare type game, where it's a lot of mini games kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just a bunch of mini games. There's yeah. another game uh, that we have. It's uh, import called Panic Park. Um, where basically two people have these controllers that you you actually bash into the other other person's controller to do various things, and it's all just a bunch of mini games, but it's incredibly fun. Another one that stuck out for us when we were visiting Replay FX this year was the um, the uh, rail cart game, where your two people. That was it. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's that Panic one. Park, right? Oh, that's Panic Park. No, that's the minecart game. The that's mine uh, game. Oh, Magical the oh, Truck Adventure. You know what? I forgot about that. We actually brought that back to life. <laughs> I was showing you in the back yeah. how we we changed the screen to an LCD screen. Mm -hmm. We, that wasn't there the first year we did the event. I'm sorry. I apologize. It was amazing just watching the guys, and I was coaching them. 
is, uh, their, to their teamwork. It was a team building exercise for the guys. <laughs> that was right in yeah. front of the building. It was actually one of the first games that you saw, I think. Yep, absolutely. That, that game requires quite the expenditure of energy, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you haven't played it, you should see if you can find one and play if it. If you thought Pump It Up and Dance Dance Revolution was tough, you got to try that game. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a lot of movement, using your back a little bit. Uh, definitely a lot going on there. Yeah, so. I'm, not, I'm not riding any mine carts anytime <laughs> soon. It's you're not, not, you're not doing uh, no. Dance Dance Revolution yeah. either. I have like eight left feet. It's not happening. <laughs> oh, I'm all about that game. Uh, but anyways, so so you, know, you talked a little bit about uh, Replay FX, of course. Um, it, 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 your second year this year at the David Lawrence Convention Center, and it is. I loved walking in there. And this was my first year attending. My friends got to got to last year, and and I walked in, saw the dim lights and the wacky uh, wavy balloon men and, and like, lasers and lots lasers, of lasers. And I'm just like, it's yep. a it's the biggest arcade. Ever. like the, the the atmosphere was there the, tell me a little bit about that event and 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 kind of the conception of we're gonna take all of this and move it downtown for a week so that's what actually one of the um, one of the driving forces towards us doing it doing it is the fact that our, our current building um, in Carnegie is in an industrial park it's a smaller building we have maybe like actual parking spots we own i think 30 parking spots it's in front no, of the it's building. no more than 30 or five yeah or something like that and we were running an event every year called pinberg the one i told you about that we now run at replay and we basically got that up to 400 people and we're like we can't do this you know we can't go any bigger in this current building it's I, just not possible i showed them the picture up at the front with the people lined up all the way to the back yeah that was when we had 400 people right so we wanted to make it bigger and you know we thought let's let's just let's have a huge arcade convention like the other bad thing is for like the world championships in Pinburg, we get people from all over the world like we get people from japan from sweden you know a bunch of europeans come over and the only parts of pittsburgh they see are from the airport to carnegie <laughs> and it's like you're kind of getting ripped off of the pittsburgh experience if you're not right. able to I like mean, come through great. the fort pitt tunnel carnegie's great but you're up here in an industrial park we love and, carnegie you know our, our friend Slice on Broadway are down here in, in Main Street, so, you know. Joe's uh, Cafe is down there here. There you go. Uh, Carnegie's awesome. Happening. Carnegie is awesome, but we wanted to be able to expose more people to not only a bigger and more massive event, but let's get them into the city. Let's see if we can do something to incorporate Pittsburgh more into what we're doing. So we looked into our director, Mark Steinman, looked into uh, the, running out the DLCC. And uh, the first year we had it, we had uh, just one hall or two halls? Uh, we, had we had one, one hall the hall, first year. 110,000 square feet, just 110,000 And last year we expanded feet. to two halls, and we'll see what happens for, uh, wow. for year three. But, I mean, the feedback we got from people just from moving it from here to Pittsburgh was amazing just because, you know, we have, like I said, all the Europeans that came in that have never seen the city. And they get that awesome view of coming through the Fort Pitt tunnels and having, you know, Pittsburgh it's explode in front of you, which is amazing. And just the, just the uh, the river view from the convention center is amazing too. Just I, I just love walking up and down there anytime in there. I'm in there for for some kind. Yeah, of the con. DLCC is a world class facility. Oh yeah. Like you know, and and a bunch of the people um, just have never seen it. Like there's no there also isn't like any real major convention there. Mm -hmm. um, so. We want to we want to bring more people to the city. We want to you know besides promoting the arcade culture, we want to expose those people to the awesomeness that is Pittsburgh as well. Well, the, well, the one big thing that everybody had asked about was um, events going on in the city while they were here. And half the people probably that come to the festival go to Pirate Games because it's right across the river, and then the view from the baseball park is phenomenal. And um, Again, you go to the casino, you go to baseball games, you go to Kennywood. There's a lot of different things that open it up, you know, having it in the city. So the museum right around the corner, yeah. too. Right. Yeah, the Warhol Museum's right near there. Yeah. Um, there's a number of different things. Uh, the eateries around the, the convention center now are amazing. Like, you know, 10, 20 years ago, it was, they, they weren't even there. Now you have all these, you know, microbreweries and all these specialty restaurants and things like that. So it makes sense for us. It makes sense for the city. Um, in order to do that because again we're bringing people into the city that can enjoy other things besides our festival um, as well so and, and again you guys you got, we talked a little bit in advance here about uh, you know it, it's the video games it's the pinball but you guys also really represented the console gaming and and, and that was something going in it's like I don't think I'll spend much time over there I have a lot of video games I, you know I got, I got a pretty good NES collection but it, but still it was like oh I never played that game on the Saturn <laughs> oh I never played that game over there oh, I've never touched Neo Geo before um, what was kind of the, the philosophy there going into uh, including consoles in this? 
Well, as far as the consoles, it's it's obviously a, a very large part of the culture these days. A lot of people, um, you know, again, I started off with a, an Odyssey back in the 70s, and then it went to an Atari, and then it just grew from there. And I've been through every iteration of a system all the way up to the, to the current systems. But uh, the one thing we found is we have the new systems. More people were interested in playing the old systems. And we have old CRT TVs, which you saw in the back. We have 25 pallets of them or whatever. Um, we wanted the experience to be very similar to what it was when you were a kid or when whenever you know we were kids and we wanted to make it as big and friendly as possible but also have a lot of systems that you don't see every day you don't see a neo geo you don't see a pippin you don't see an original pong system vectrex. that you, a vectrex sorry mark boozler has the vectrex you have to tell him shout out to mark um there are so many different systems that you can get anywhere you can go rent them from rent a center if you want to yeah. But if you want an Atari and you want to play Canyon Bomber or Maze Craze, you know, that's what people wanted to, to, to gravitate towards. And that's what we catered to. Um, Nintendo systems were incredibly popular. Uh, so even, the even as nice as the next gen, yeah, next gen systems are, it was the old school stuff that everybody was interested in playing. And we've grown our library uh, probably double from what it was last year because of that reason, because the, the demand was there. Yeah, and besides having the um, all the arcade, the consoles that were set up, we have almost an, a rental station where you can go back, and we have 3,000 games to choose from. So if, if you walk up to the NES and the game you want to play isn't in there, you just walk to the back and say, hey, do you guys have, you know, River City Ransom? And they'll oh. be like, sure, here it is. Yes. It's a great game. Oh, it's one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite old-school 8-bit games. Yeah, I, I get excited just thinking about playing that game because I played a ton of it when I was a kid. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to see, again, the kids. If you spend any time over there, you probably saw a lot of kids sitting in front of those yeah. TVs playing the old school games that they just don't have access to or are playing on a digital platform and getting that experience. And they'll remember that. The next time they come, they'll play even more of the older games. Also really big, um, I, I, you guys had um, uh, the Super Nintendo CD PlayStation uh, prototype that was in the all over the internet news here and over the last year. Yeah, Dan and Terry uh, Diebold, um, they um, were were gracious enough to come to our event and um, and bring it, and it caused a lot of excitement. And I know they they're touring around with it, but they were real excited to be able to come to Pittsburgh. Actually, Terry is originally from Homestead, which I found out from uh, from meeting him. So he was very excited to come back to Pittsburgh because he lives on the east side of uh, Pennsylvania now. Um, him and his son were ecstatic to be back, you know, where his dad grew up and be able to bring it to the masses. And they, you know, it was in a case, but if you wanted your picture taken with it, they would take it right out and give it to you and let you hold it for pictures. And Josh Gockle, uh, the gentleman who runs the console area, was having many mild heart attacks um, during that event because, um, you know, that thing is so rare. Yeah. So um, they won. They were offered six figures for it and they turned it down. Uh, and talking with Terry and Dan. There was a security Dan. guard there. Yeah, there was yeah. a security guard, guard there the entire time. Very intimidating security guard there. <laughs> we were actually going to prank Josh. Oh, yeah. Um, it, we didn't. Um, I we still had, think we should have. We, we opted on the, the side of caution, but um, we were going to make it disappear. And we had Dan and, uh, Dan and Terry's blessing on this. We hatched it at like 1 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night. And we were going to do it. And um, they were totally on board. But then... Um, well, now you got to reveal the plan. Well, we were going to make the system uh, just disappear. And then we were going to have the case where it was actually being housed. And we had one broken in transit. We were going to replace the functional locking one with the broken one with the broken side facing out. So whenever they came back, because we were going to pull them away, our director was actually involved in this as well. Um, when he came back, the security guard was going to be sleeping. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Mark and Dan and, and Terry were going to walk back and say, what happened to the system? And then Josh would have probably lost his mind um, because he was being very protective of it. But um, again, we uh, in running the big festival that we had, we time constraints kind of took over and we weren't able to do it. We didn't want Josh to jump out a window. So <laughs> no, we, no, we didn't it. want him to jump into the river. That great view was there. He would jump right into the river. 
But uh, yeah, we were gonna we were gonna prank them, and we were gonna put it on YouTube. We had a camera we were gonna put on it and everything, and have it all forever. And I've ruined the plan now, and it's never gonna happen. <laughs> it it so. was funny because our, our our boy Chachi that, that attended your first uh, one, he he I connected with him, and he's like he's like, okay, you distract the guard, and I'll run off with it. You know, just kind of <laughs> playing. And so we go and, and, and go look at it, and, and I had already been over there and checked it out before, and and um uh, the, the the father I believe was there, and he's like he's like, I can take it out of the, out of the case so you guys can take pictures, and I look at I look at him and I'm just like, I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't even dare ask to touch it or anything like that. Yeah, what some it, people don't know too is it works. Yeah. It, right. it works. It's not just a mock up. Like they, we, we donated a game to them actually because they didn't have a Famicom game that worked with it. Right. We, have we a donated Famicom a game to them. Right. And uh, they powered it up, and we were playing Street Fighter on it badly. Yeah, I, was, I was talking with them, and they said they were in Street Fighter. That's awesome. Badly. Uh, bad, yeah, yeah. I'm glad um, I missed that one. I'm no good at Street Fighter. But, uh, but as they were talking about, like, they're, they're looking to actually replace, like, the, the laser in it and trying to get it working and everything. Sure. So that was that was really cool. Yeah, they're still – I'm friends with Dan and Terry on Facebook, and um, I follow them, and they were just in Oklahoma City doing an event. Mm -hmm. So they want people to see it, and that's the nice thing about this – hobby and the and part of what we do is uh, you were talking about the pinball culture earlier and how approachable people are you know if you were more into the video games you don't really know about what the pinball culture is it's very similar and the people are very open and you know when dan and terry said yeah here's the super nes prototype it's worth six figures here hold on to it and take a picture of it you know you know anything i've been to sports conventions where baseball cards have been under glass with an armed guard standing next to them <laughs> um they want people to enjoy it. They want you to play it. Even if it's going to make you have a little bit of a mini heart attack, they want you to enjoy it. That's what it's for. And that's part of what we want to do with Replay FX, too, is bring right. stuff like that. Like, we don't own that, unfortunately. But, you know, bring things like that in so people can come in. And every year there's going to be different speakers, different seminars, and different attractions for people to do. So it's not like you go one year and you're like, well, I've seen everything there is to see. There's always going to be new stuff to see every year. And uh, not just that, uh, Looking for Group, I know, provided uh, board games for you guys this year, too, for that area. Yes, our good friends at LFG, they did a fantastic job. They ran a couple, uh, I think they made a Smash Brothers tournament, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, they had a Smash Brothers, and they also had some of their independent games that they were being played, and they had tournaments going on for there, and they had their own little booth at the front of the console lounge that was busy constantly. Non -stop. It was non -stop. constantly busy. And uh, John and his, and his crew, uh, they did a phenomenal job, and we're fantastic. really looking forward to the future with them. And the, the console lounge grew from last year. It was Sadly, it was almost an afterthought up on the third floor. And then we realized nobody was playing the games. So we moved them down to the, to the second floor where the ping pong table was this year. And then this year it was in the lobby where it deserved to be in the first place. And they, um, they did a tremendous job with it. Uh, speaking about that pinball culture we were talked about before we started recording here, um, it, it was really eye-opening for me to see kind of that pinball culture in person um, at replay from seeing like the vendors that just had parts, like pinball parts, <laughs> like like true now. I'm like, these are just lights and these are just, just you know, bumpers and, 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 and who knows what. And, and, uh, and then walking around the competition area and watching how serious this is. Um, it, 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 was, it was really interesting for that. And, and of course, that, that, that's the big kind of cornerstone of what you guys are doing here. Yeah, like one of our, our major things is this, you know, we started running the World Championships of Pinball. Um, we picked it up after it was uh, defunct for a couple of years, um, and that's been run here. And then, like I said, we run Pinberg now, which is the giant event at uh, Replay FX, which has 700 players, which we sell out in less than a day. Every spot is gone, over $100,000 in prizes. We use 280 machines in the tournament, 280 unique machines in the tournament. Um, but even on the competitive side of it, it's, you know, there's the, there's the you know, because in Pinburg you have 700 players, and obviously they're not all top 50 players because there's 700 of them. Um, but you get the full range. You get the people who are super serious about it, you know, and then you get the people that are just there to have a good time and meet new people and just, you know, play a couple play a couple games of pinball and hopefully win some money. So it's, it's really a wide variety of people that even participate in the competition. Well, it's more than a couple games. I think they probably play, what, about 100? 40 games. You play 40 games. 40 games. Yeah, you're guaranteed 40 games, right, yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a great thing to get people new into the hobby. And how many new, probably, what, 100 new participants this year, maybe more than that? There was a lot. I don't, I don't know the Yeah, exact the numbers, numbers. It's, it's great to see that, though, because every year, if you're just getting the same people year in, year in and year out, you're not growing what you want to do. And if you get a bunch of new people in there like that, that's tremendous. Yeah, and that, that tournament has grown. Um, that tournament only started six years ago. And we're already up to you know 700 participants, and maybe looking to expand in the future. 
So obviously replay and, and the competitions are, are the big cornerstone, but I know we were talking, you guys are looking to kind of expand out. I know you contributed some machines to the Heinz History Center event recently and uh, and some other things like that. Can you just speak a little bit to that and how you're, you're kind of um, um, work, looking at different outlets uh, for, for reaching out with video games? Yeah, again, it kind of goes back to um, it's a lost, I don't know, a lost hobby. And um, when the Heinz History Center, um, we were contacted by them was through a mutual friend through our Pittsburgh Pinball League, Brown Mendelson, who does a lot for his uh, for where he lives in Lawrenceville. He's bringing he's part of revitalizing Lawrenceville, and he's also trying to champion pinball as well. So he put him in contact with us because he comes down here and competes as well. And um, we were able to be part of their toys exhibit, which they ran for three months um, down there. We uh, donated 12 games and were able to put them at the end of their um, exhibit. And uh, I think they said that the number of people that went through there was about 40,000. And um, they were gracious enough to um, let us advertise. And we had our flyers down there. We had our logo there. Uh, we had our placards on our games and things like that, of course. Um, and we had our tokens down there because people were using them to play the games, kind of like an old school arcade at 25 cents a time. And then we did the pinball night. Uh, that was kind of born by setting that up in which we had, uh, I think, 400 people down there for one evening, and we're actually working on doing one in January again. I actually was just contacted by, uh, um, by, the, by the Heinz History Center again to do that, and we're probably going to do it again. Um, it might be a little bit bigger. Who knows? It just depends on what scale it is. Um, and then we were just contacted by the Pittsburgh Playhouse by way of the Heinz History Center, and they want to have four machines for their Tommy production. So for 10 days, we're going to give them machines, and they're going to be in their cafe, and they're going to be able to play them pretty much ad nauseum. And hopefully the 4,000 people that will go through there will remember what we do and come down and see what we put on at, the, at our event in, in April here or done at Replay in July. Um, we're, we're just trying to grow the hobby. That's the one thing. A lot of people don't realize we're here. Um, some of that's kind of on our shoulders, but we're trying to get out there and reach out to people to let them know that we're here and that, um, you know, this hobby is for anybody. It'd be great. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, kind of tell people where can people find what's going on, uh, information on all the many events coming up, where they can contact you about doing some very interesting things or ideas if they have them. Uh, they can contact us um, through our Facebook page, which is Replay FX. Um, they can contact us through, uh, at uh, papa.org or replayfx.org. Um, those are our three main contact points. Um, you know, they can stop down at Carnegie. Most of us, you know, there's somebody down here most any day. If they have questions, they're more than welcome to stop down and say hey and um, gather information. Unfortunately, we're not open, um, you know, other than the four days that we're here during the course of the year. Um, but they can contact us through any of those mediums. That's how the Pittsburgh Playhouse got in contact with us through our Facebook page. And uh, we'd be more than glad to try to help um, with a party or um, a team building or a corporate event or you know a, a play or what have you and team team building event around that gauntlet machine over there right absolutely <laughs> yeah you know you trying you know whenever your your coworker shoots the food instead of getting it then you can just ridicule them the rest of the day Gary stop shooting the food <laughs> Gary seriously yeah because uh, shooting the food is a is a you know one of my favorite things to do in gauntlet just because they say you shot the food and uh, it's just funny to me anyways that's great that's awesome go check them out uh, uh video games are alive and well it's not the dingy arcades of days past it's uh bright and it's lit up and it's awesome <laughs> uh so check it out uh check out these guys events uh wherever you can and uh or check out if you're in another city there's sure to be there's pinball leagues all over the place right we uh, actually have one of the largest pinball leagues in the world, Pittsburgh yep. Pinball League. PittsburghPinballLeague.org is our website. Um, last year we had over 170 people. This year we're trending. Yeah, we're no, at 140 just, come right to, now. just come to Pittsburgh, yeah. guys. This come, is this is where it's at. They come got, to Pittsburgh, they join the league. Yeah, yeah. We'll take care of you. You'll have oh, a yeah. great time. Go, go, you check it out. Get some permanies. You're good to go. The other thing too is that we have our league finals here, mm -hmm. so we're not open during the rest of the year. But if you get to come in and play our league, you pay 20 bucks to play. You have our league finals here, and we're giving away a pinball machine this year. There you go. Or this season, should I say. So, <laughs> That's awesome. Go check them out. Uh, and, of course, check out all the interviews over at awesomecast.net. Subscribe. Thank you to my awesome guests and let me into their awesome facility. You guys have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.